What's up, Lebron here, and today we're gonna look at two watercolor painting methods, okay? So method number one is gonna be a negative painting method in which with each layer we strive to cover as much of the paper as possible but skip the highlights. So first layer we paint as much as we can, skip the whites. Second layer we paint the mid values and we skip the light values. Third layer we paint the shadows and skip the mid values and the light values, okay? So we are moving in a negative way. We paint everything but. The second method is a positive painting method in which we first actually paint the highlights, then we paint the mid values, then we paint the shadows. Now, they're not completely different. There are some similarities and there are places where they um, intersect, but it is a bit of a different mindset, especially in the first wash. With, first one, you, with the first method, you paint everything almost. With the second one, you start from the highlights, okay? I hope you're gonna enjoy this one. Let's get started. So we'll get started with the first approach and I'm gonna show you the drawing process just once. For the next one, we won't do any drawing. So here is the line where the table ends pretty much. It's gonna be here. We have the map coming through here. Now here we have the tablecloth and that's really important. I wanna get that uh, to look nice and it goes kind of like this and then like that. And with this approach, as a reminder, we'll first start, we'll soon start painting. Uh, what we wanna focus on is starting from uh, covering everything up, okay? It's gonna be a more, I don't know, you could call it holistic approach or more trying to merge everything together. He together. Here's one, uh, one of the, the different items in the composition, the pair. I'm gonna play around with the sizes a bit I won't stick to the reference 100%. Here's the clementine, I suppose. And here we have the apple. That's not a real apple, by the way. And you can probably see that. The drawing doesn't have to be too complex or too good for that matter, really. And then I'm gonna drop this uh, cast shadow here. Now it has to conform to the direction uh, of the tablecloth. Okay, that's really important so that it looks good. And then it connects here to this shadow, this shadow, and then we have another smaller shadow here. Now, uh, after I put in the different elements, I wanna draw the lines of shadow. Okay, that's also really important. So I'm gonna start here. Uh, this kind of goes like that. Then we have it tucks in here, goes like this. And then we have this rounded cast shadow by the apple. We will pay attention to the edges in this painting as well. Uh, it is important because uh, they'll add interest and we do have different edges here it's more blurry and here it's sharper okay here we have a bit of a shadow we have a highlight um, here we have a bit of a highlight and a bit of a shadow through here okay uh, and I think now we pretty much got everything in its place just the, the stem here I think we got everything in place and we can now move on and start painting this so as I mentioned, with this one, we're gonna take a bit of a more holistic approach and we will cover everything up with an initial wash, then uh, add the shadows and then go on like this. And uh, with the second approach, again, we'll do uh, just start from the highlights, then go over the mid values and then the shadows. But here, we're gonna just do a, an initial wash that covers everything but a couple of highlights, okay? So here you have to work a little fast you don't want this drying on you. So here we have a highlight on the stem. This entire right section can be covered. And I'm th always thinking of my edges. What edge is gonna uh, dry on me? What edge uh, do I have to uh, notice? Here we have a bit of highlight on the pear. Uh, we have a bit of highlight on the leaf that I may get rid of later because it's not that striking. Like so. Here, just a very gentle, I need more water, just a very gentle highlight around like so. And the advantage of this method, and I already messed it up because the tablecloth stays white, uh, the advantage of this method is that everything is more well connected, let's say. And there are a couple of advantages to that. The, the painting can flow a little better when done that way. Uh, but the disadvantage is you have to uh, be very careful with how you work and how you paint and how you uh, cover everything up. You need to put in some thought. 
a lot of negative painting that's not always easy. Connect it here, connect it here to this shadow. And again, we're gonna darken pretty much everything here that will require darkening. And uh, we are pretty much done with the first layer. I actually really like the way it looks now. And we can now, we could do some wet and wet just for fun to start establishing some uh, additional values and details. And I'm gonna do that. Not too, uh, not too much of it, just a little bit. Around here, this entire apple is gonna be darker, so might as well go a little darker here. Like that. Um, but aside from that, I think we're gonna allow it now some time to dry then come back and continue with the next uh, layer. So the first part is dry and remember we'll always uh, aspire to fill in as many areas as possible in one go with this approach, okay? So I'm gonna start left to right. I'm gonna work on this apple uh, and I'm gonna use my uh, viewfinder just to make sure that my value is somewhat accurate. It should be a little darker. So I'm gonna darken it a bit uh, at the very top as well. Uh, and I'm gonna try and do this again in one go, okay? So here is me darkening some of the uh, this fake apple. <laughs> um, and now I have to really crank it up. So what you wanna do is just grab a lot of paint. Don't go dip into the water back again, because that'll uh, not be a good idea. You will lose the dark value and you cannot really uh, get it back. So this is for the dark section kind of a reflection of uh, what's in front of the apple and all the bottom section as well. Now the middle part should be much darker. And how do we do this? I just wet my brush, wipe it on the towel, and then I kind of connect this area to the existing areas, okay? And this will keep it a little lighter, but still quite dark. And then I continue and I move on to this shadow under the apple. And I'm just gonna straighten the shape of the apple just a little bit and have that small reflected light over there and we're done with this part. There is a bit of a darker spot here as well and a bit of a darker spot here and around the highlight also. But this is pretty much it. Uh, and now I can continue. You know what, let me lift back up just a bit of this section, here we go. Uh, now I'm gonna continue into the shadow. Remember, we're gonna combine and merge as many areas as we can. This shadow isn't too dark, so that's good enough, probably. Maybe just a bit more paint, just to make sure. And then up into the pear. Now for the pear, uh, there are, there is a variety of edges. Uh, that you want to make sure you achieve and also I have I have to connect it to this section and Then while I'm at it. I have to blend this section. So I'm gonna switch to another brush And I'm gonna dry it significantly and kind of blend this part in Okay, so here we go and before it dries I have to continue and usually I won't work bottom to top but here uh, it kind of dictates it by the reference, so that can happen from time to time. The entire pair, I'm gonna cover it up, and then I'm gonna paint around that other thing, whatever it is. Uh, Clementine, Clementine. Near the bottom there's a heavy shadow. Now I will blend, okay, again, this is really important. I'm gonna blend this edge, like so, here as well, and here I'm gonna keep the transition uh, very uh, abrupt, okay? Uh, just one thing, I want to add a bit of a shadow here, okay? Because that area is a little darker, plus um, if it's already dried while I was on the phone, I'm gonna darken this section a bit here. Probably could darken this edge as well, you know what, let's do that. Kind of like that, and we're good. Now let's move on to uh, this thing that's a little uh, darker. Probably, you know what, let me check. I'm gonna check, I'm gonna use my, my uh, this thing here. It's almost, it's at the right level. So all I'm gonna do is just slightly darken it. 
So I'm gonna wet the whole area and that way I can get a nice uh, wet and wet effect for the shadow. So I'm wetting it uh, and I will uh, add a couple of uh, dots just to convey the texture. Here we go, like that. Like this and around here it starts getting a little darker. I wanna get some more paint and darken this section up all the way to the bottom. The shadows are also quite dark here. The bottom part here isn't as dark. So I kind of cleaned off some of the water and now back into uh, the cast shadow. And they're not matching in the direction. So let me fix that. Here we go. Uh, I want to add a bit of uh, black paint to the very bottom here, okay? Because there's a strong shadow there. Uh, and I'm gonna add a bit of shadow here to the apple if it already dried a bit. Here as well. You can just do touches. If you don't do too much, it will look good. Um, we also have the leaves here. So this leaf almost black around here. Then it gets a little lighter and I'm kind of doing my own interpretation of it. It's not gonna be exactly uh, the way it is, but it's gonna be close enough. Uh, and here there is the shadow on the stem. Now here we have the other leaf. So that shadow starts with fully black right here. Like that. Then we have a bit of a uh, lighter patch, so shall we say. So I need not a lot of water because I don't want to move the paint too much. Uh, and then the shadow on the stem. And we're pretty much done. We do have this part here, the stem here. And we're pretty much going to uh, let the dark background do the rest now. So what I'm gonna do is rotate it. Let me show you like that. And then I'm gonna fill in the dark background. Okay, I'm gonna need a lot of paint for this. And I'm gonna need to work fast. The reason I need to work fast is because it's thick paint it's, it won't flow as much, okay? So here we go, real quick, no time to uh, mess around with it too much. If you're having uh, trouble with these kinds of things, it's all about working on your um, brushwork technique. And the, the more you improve with that, and I'm gonna switch to a bigger brush, no need to torture myself. The more you can improve that, the easier it will be to cover these areas up efficiently uh, and quickly, okay? In a way that will look good. Now here I'm gonna have a bit of a challenge because it's a bit of a thinner area, but we're good and we're good here. And we're pretty much done with the apple. I am going to, hmm, okay, yeah. We'll get rid of some highlights and reflections that weren't necessary. Now this is the important part for the pear because up until this point, it really has no shape. And now it's gonna have finally its shape. So kind of like that around here, kind of messed it up a bit, but that's fine. Around the leaf, maybe a bit of a highlight near the edge of the leaf, just cause I feel like it. And here we're gonna see the shape of the leaf because uh, there's a, the lighter part of it. And here underneath, there is a strong shadow and the stem's almost gone there because of a shadow cast by the leaf. So here we go. And here we've reached an opening, which means it's gonna be much easier uh, to cover this area up. Now the background is darker than the pear. Okay, that's important to note. So I'm gonna have to use a lot of paint here. It is darker. If you observe the reference very carefully, uh, you'll see that. Here we go, just fixed its shape a bit. And once we rotate it, you'll see what beautiful of a result we got, okay? So it's gonna be a bit of suspense and that's gonna be uh, pretty much the first part. We have a couple of final touches to do and then we'll move on to the second approach and I'm gonna probably skimp over some non-interesting parts with that. Uh, but in any case, check it out. Now we get a nice little sense of light and shadow. It looks good. Uh, and all we have to do is really do the same thing here at the bottom because that area is dark. And you want to make sure, especially in the 
here it doesn't really matter, you can play around with it, but near the actual start of the tablecloth, you do have to be a little more accurate, as you can see here, as I'm trying to do, uh, like this, and goes back like that, and the rest will uh, tell the story on its own. I need a bit more water, the paint isn't moving enough, like so. There we go. Um, and I think with that we're pretty much done. There is this shadowy, how will I do this, like that, because the tablecloth kind of moves to the side, so I will indicate that, and then I will blend the edge. Uh, I just feel like it will be beneficial to show that, so let me show you. I need to really clean my brush, and then dry most of it, and here we go. Play around with the edge, uh, and I think with that, we are done. So this is the first way I would approach this. Um, I could even darken just a little bit uh, this left section, but, but in any case, this is the approach of trying to cover and fill in and connect as many areas as possible. Next up, I'm gonna show you a bit of a different route, starting with the highlights, then moving on to the shadows. So we'll now get started with the second approach, and here uh, we're gonna work from light to dark uh, for real. We're gonna paint the actual highlights, okay? We're gonna paint them. So how will we do this? And again, this, these two methods, depending on the painting, you may prefer one over the other. That's perfectly fine, depending on your personal preference, you may enjoy one over the other. I'm giving you these as options, okay? Because I want you to have the options to try a couple of things, which is why I'm showing you. So here I'm, in fact, painting the highlights, not the white highlights, but the almost white. Now, usually, normally, what I would do is continue here and just finish the pair off. Uh, but I think with this, what I'm gonna do is to really demonstrate the method, I'm gonna finish with the highlights, I'm gonna finish, we're gonna do it really step by step, okay? Um, the the tablecloth is white, so we don't need to do any of that. Uh, in fact, it's actually really almost uh, everything we need. Uh, I'm going to do this part here, and this is very similar to painting kind of a la prima, because uh, I don't need to worry about too many things uh, I'm just worried on the section on which I'm currently working on, okay? So now I'm going with something that's a little bit darker, but just a little bit, I exaggerated here a bit. I'm covering that up as well. Now we have the highlights on the leaf, which I also wanna get, so a bit of it here, and on the leaf itself, and here we have a bit up top. The advantage of this method is that you see where the highlights are, okay? So here we have another one, kind of like that. Uh, and with that, we're pretty much done with the highlight. Now let's move on to the mid values. I can continue straight away um, with it because uh, I'm not touching the same area. I already painted the highlights and I'm fine with that. The edges are gonna be okay. So now I'm moving on to the mid values and shadows. It's gonna be a bit messy, but uh, bear with me. Okay, so this is the shadow on the apple and here, around the highlight there is a darker section and again that light middle section is gonna get the same treatment just a bit of water to kind of blend it up with the rest and then I'm gonna move on to the shadows here which are also a mid value make them a little bit darker follow the shape of the tablecloth that's really important and then connect it with this shadow, darken it up. And the main difference is with the first layer, okay? With the previous example, we covered everything up. And uh, that's an approach that you, will m you may see more commonly used by impressionistic painters, but it's not the only way. And I did wanna introduce you to this other way of doing it, okay? So here we go, I'm gonna again run a little faster through this process because we've already seen something. But the main thing is I already painted the highlights, okay? That's the, the, the main change in this particular method. So like that, now I'm gonna put in some very dark shadows around here. It's very wet, so I need a lot of paint to, to beat the wetness that's already there. 
like so, continue with this shadow here. And this is pretty much it. So now let's move on to work on another kind of mid value, which is uh, this thing right over here. And I'm gonna wet, I'm gonna allow this to touch because I don't care that it'll blend a bit here and here as well, that's fine. Uh, around these highlights here and the small texture details that I usually don't approach that way, but I decided to this time. And then onto the shadow, then straight into the uh, shadow here, because we're already here, so why not? And this entire section should be darker. So I ended up doing it very much a la prima, like the previous example. But the first wash is where the difference is because we're working in different areas, okay? Next up, let's do the mid values and shadows on the leaves and the rest of the details. So here it goes fairly dark and perhaps lightens up around the base of the uh, leaf, like so. Here, there is a shadow like that. Here we have a shadow here and here. This part is almost black, really, the edge here. A bit of shadow there. And I think with that we're pretty much done with the central area. So now we can move on to um, the bottom and top. So I'm going to start this time with the bottom because I'm already kind of in this direction. That's one. Oh, and one thing I forgot is to blend the edge. So lucky that I remembered here. I want to blend this edge and it's still wet, so it's going to be fine. And coming back with an, uh, just a damp brush to really blend it in finally. And it took some time with this, so it started drying. Here we go. Fill that area up. Let's switch to a bit of a larger brush, but not the Raphael like I used before. This time silver black velvet bit of a, a more accurate edge to it. And uh, the difference in these methods isn't necessarily very uh, apparent in the technique, but it's more of a mindset shift, as I mentioned earlier. There is one mindset of, I'm gonna paint everything but the highlights, which is uh, the first approach that we did. And the second approach is, I'm gonna paint the, the specific value I'm working on right now. So if I'm working on the highlights, I'm going to paint the highlights. If I'm working on the shadows, I'm going to paint the shadows and so on. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Now let's turn this one around. You know what, actually, before we do that, I need to darken some sections here. Uh, this area should be much darker. And notice how I do this very... without overthinking anything. I know it's going to work because I have trust in my brushwork and everything, so... Uh, so it works. And this is something that takes some time to acquire, so it's, uh, there is no way of circumventing actually building that experience, so don't worry if, if you're still not there, because there's, if you're not there, there's no reason for you to be there yet. Okay, so here we go. Now let's turn this entire thing around and paint the background, okay? So lots of black. Actually, I'm starting to run out of it. Let's give it a bit of a, an angle here, like so, and get started. So we finished with the uh, highlights, we painted them, we painted the mid values, and now we're painting uh, the shadows, last thing, okay? Last thing we paint is the shadows. Here we go, around that leaf, and I like leaving that small highlight there at the top, and then a bit of a highlight on the stem. And what a beautiful, beautiful shape this apple and the stem have. The negative painting is, is, a, is a, an art form in and of itself. Uh, so you really have to kind of practice and get a feel for it. And you can see me kind of messing up here and there. Like so. Uh, because it's not an easy transition in the, the way you think about things to paint them uh, negatively to paint them by painting around them that's a really rough actually change to go through um, and it's not easy and that's it's fine it shouldn't be easy it's a very rewarding technique that takes some time to uh, get a grip on okay 
Shadow Under the Leaf. Bit of the highlight there for the stem. This is a very small highlight. And here we go, fill it all up. Around this part. And this is pretty much it. Just some final uh, touches. And then we're gonna zoom out and conclude. So here around the bottom, there's the table that's actually a little darker. I will indicate it now. The advantage of this method is that you can work in a bit of a more methodical way, I would say, than if you're just painting the, you know, the always negative painting. Uh, I think it's a, it's a good way to focus on the specific value you're currently working on. Uh, I think it's a very healthy way of doing things and I'm planning on doing much more than that uh, in the near future. So here we go. We do have that um, very gentle part here. It's a little darker and I don't mind it touching the background a bit. Um, we didn't do the right mid value here, so I'll just correct it, just darken it a little bit, like so. But really the magic of watercolor is when you can not overdo them, which is what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna stop and let this one uh, go. Uh, let's zoom out. So here you can see uh, both paintings and I absolutely love both of them. If I had to choose one, I will say this one has a bit more finesse. The apple I didn't get as dark here at the bottom. I lifted a little too much. It's just subtle things that provide a more realistic impression. I think the pear is better here, the apple's better here. Um, but yeah, you'll always get that some parts are better with each iteration and you won't necessarily improve everything, okay? Uh, I didn't even get this part here at the side with the other one. Uh, but I'm very pleased with them. And again, just to recap, this approach, you paint with every step, you paint as much as you can. And sometimes it's even pretty flat, but all you're trying to do is avoid the highlights. So lots of negative painting. With this technique, also lots of negative painting, but the focus is on the value that you paint at the moment. So you first paint the actual highlights, then you paint the mid values, then you paint the shadows. It's uh, thoughts wise, it's very different. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video and now let's wrap it up. So this is it for this one. Once again, I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope you understand the difference between the two. I think I could have uh, explained it a little better had I covered everything for real, like even the tablecloth, but that's more suitable for landscapes and cityscapes. But I hope seeing these two methods enriches the way you approach this and I'm just trying to give you options, okay? I'm not saying one way is better than the other, I'm just trying to give you an option that you may have not thought about, okay? So uh, I want you to let me know in a comment down below uh, which method do you currently use, if at all, uh, and uh, if you would like to try out the second one. Just I, I'm curious to hear your opinion about this one because I see a lot of people work this way, I see a lot of people work that way. Uh, and besides that, I want to thank you once again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you still haven't. That really helps my channel grow. And with that being said, I will see you again in the next vid real soon.